Hi everybody, this is Maya Good, and I want to talk to you a little bit about how my goals for reading have affected my enjoyment of reading. And this came up particularly for me because over the last couple of years, I have made a concerted effort to learn to be more critical in my reading and to dissect what I'm reading in order to become a better writer. If you remember an old, old video a long time ago, I talked a little bit about like a self-motivated MFA, you know, a system of, rec I, I sat down and I looked at what does an MFA program give you? And I tried to replicate that in my own life. So, you know, an MFA program gives you lots of critiques with other people. So I joined critique groups and MFA forces you to read a lot more difficult literature and to dissect it. So I created podcasts that really pushed me to do that. And I'm noticing some really significant changes recently, and some of them are a little on the frustrating side. So I want to talk to you a little bit about that today. One of the things that came up for me is, um, you know, when I was a kid, we didn't really have YA fiction as like a thing. Um, you read children's literature, you moved to middle grade, and then you moved to adult books. That's just how it was. Sure, there was YA fiction within adult books, but it was held to the same standard as adult books, and it wasn't marketed as YA. And so when I was in middle school and high school, I would go into the library, and I was exposed to so much literature that is no longer in the school libraries. Um, and it really shaped my reading as a child. When I was younger in middle school, I was reading a lot of fantasy. I was reading a lot of Shakespeare. I was like Shakespeare-holic. Then I started getting into literary fiction. I was kind of annoyed by school and a little bit of a rebel. So I had this thing going on where a book was assigned. I wouldn't read it until after like all the projects were done and I got my A. Then I would read the book. Um, and so I grew up reading a lot of literary fiction, but also reading a lot of other types of fiction as well. Um, but I never got completely cemented into any of the genres. The genre, the few genres I read the most were fantasy and horror. And pretty much everything else, I read probably one or two books and just kept going back to literary fiction. There was something in literary fiction that was getting me. I remember the first time I read Anna Karina, I read it in middle school. I think I was in eighth grade when I read it the first time. And I read it in two days. Like I did not move my face from that book for two days. I was just so into this this experience of this book. And when I was done reading it the first time, I felt like I had experienced something. But if someone had come up to me and said, what was the book about? I don't think I could have told them. Uh, I was learning so much. And for a long time, I was reading it like every year, probably until I was 20 years old, I was reading Anna Karin in every year. There were just, and every time I read it, it was like, it was the first time I'd read it. Uh, every time I read it, I saw something new, something amazing. But I was still enjoying a lot of other books. I was still enjoying Stephen King. I was still enjoying Storm Constantine. I was still enjoying Rogers and Laney. Like, I was still reading a lot of other stuff. And I was one of those kids that actually really loved the books that we were reading in school. But I wouldn't read them at the same rate as the rest of the class because the rest of the class would ruin the book for me. Like... We would read, you know, I remember when we read Antony and Cleopatra, and I was so frustrated with the class by that point because we'd already gone through Taming of the Shrew, and it was just so annoying being stuck in that class listening to people and that I actually read it ahead of time so that it wouldn't have it ruined for me. And so I had a lot of that going on. We read a lot of really political books, and um, some of those books really shaped how I saw the world, you know. I think I must have been in 10th or 11th grade when we read The Handmaid's Tale. And that book just hit me like a ton of bricks because there was nothing in that book that felt like it couldn't actually happen. You know, the way it, the way the society, society has taken over using like ATM cards and just making money unavailable to people was just so mind-blowing and such like a, a paradigm shift for me at that age. It was just huge. So in college, you know, I didn't read diddly squat for fiction. I was exhausted. I was raising two small children while I was in school. It took me forever to get my bachelor's because of that. And I, so the only real like fiction I read while I was in school was YA. And that was the first time I had the experience of YA. Uh, I read Harry Potter every year when I was in college. We didn't, you know, I think it came out in 97. I had the kids in 97, you know, so it was like my break from 
Harry Potter would come out and I would take a break for like a day and read the book. Take a break from being a mom, like feed them cereal for 24 hours and just read the book. The end. And I enjoyed it. I did enjoy it. And I read a few others, but not very many. But I genuinely enjoyed the book because it gave me a little bit of an escape. And I was able at that stage to separate, you know, reading like something dense and important and multi-layered from reading something that was just for fun, that was enjoyable, that gave me an escape from my life. I was able to do both of those and enjoy both of those on two different lanes. Like there was no lane crossing happening. So over the last two years, everything essentially that I've read, I've dissected. Every single book. I haven't read very many books because I'm not a very fast reader, but my reading has gotten faster. Um, now that I now that I've been reading more difficult stuff, I can breeze through like regular novels fairly quickly now, whereas I wasn't before. Um, I'm finally getting my sit bones warmed up so that I'm now, you know, I, I got my speed up, but my ability to sit for a long period of time was kind of reduced. But over the last few weeks, I've been definitely able to sit longer and read longer, and, and I'm really happy with where I'm going. I dissect everything I'm reading. I've read some great books on how to be a better reader, and I've talked about them before. And so I'm sitting here, I'm reading really ugh, such noisy people. So I'm, I'm reading Your Magical Thinking, I'm getting ready to read um, White Light for the book club. I've got some short stories for Richard Matheson I'm getting through. I just finished 10th of December. I've got like several short stories that I'm, I'm, you know, for the book club coming up. And so I just took a break and I was like, you know what? I'm riding my bike. I want to listen to something simple, something fun. I haven't read a YA book in probably a decade. So let me just grab one. Let me just see what's out there. And I picked up, um, I already had a copy of Miss Peregrine's School for Children, School for Peculiar Children. And I thought that would be a fun read, especially because I have a couple people in my critique group that are writing middle grade and YA. So I think it's kind of important for me to get a feel for the genre and the language and everything, because I, I know that's different from when I was a kid. Um, when I was a kid, nobody really cared. They'd just tell you, go look it up. And so... I'm listening to this audiobook, and for the first few chapters, I'm like, wow, this is really good. Like, I am legitimately impressed at the level of writing in this book. Um, I would say that, you know, the first couple paragraph, first couple chapters, I was like, the writing in this is actually better than the first book of Harry Potter. And um, I, I still would agree with that for at least the first few chapters. And I was really impressed with the writing and I was thinking, you know, this is a really good kids book. I would definitely recommend this to somebody with, you know, middle school and under. Then it gets to the middle of the book and I am just, in my head, I am listing off all the problems with the book. And I'm realizing that I have lost my ability to turn off my critical, reader writer brain and just enjoy a story like I'm physically incapable of doing that and then I started thinking about the other the other forms of media I don't watch a lot of movies I don't watch TV I have Netflix and so I tend to be very picky and I realized that the movies I've been picking recently tend to be much more dense and multi-layered I'm noticing that the shows that I tend to stream um like in bulk that I tend to like sit and just watch the whole thing tend to be multi-layered and dense. Um, there were a few that I enjoyed that weren't and I almost, it was almost always during a time when I was super stressed out I just needed a break and even then they were just really really well done and very tight stories. Um, and so I'm noticing that not only is my book reading, not only is my reading changed but but my ability to watch bad movies has changed. Like, I can't watch a bad movie now because I have looked, trained myself to expect so much more from my movies and my books. Just like I can no longer read a book that was written purely for enjoyment because I'm expecting multi-layer, I'm expecting characterization, I'm expecting tight language, I'm expecting dialogue that moves me, I'm expecting all these emotions, and it was written for fun and I've lost my fun. So I'm sitting here on book two, screwing off, wasting time, 
And somebody, you know, that I really, really like, I can't remember her name off the top of my head because I'm bad with names, but I was watching a review of The Handmaid's Tale and recently, um, Strip Cover Lit, has been reading Harry Potter. I've been really enjoying those videos. Those are right. Um, and I started thinking about rereading books. Books that I loved. And I'm like, hmm, I haven't read Handmaid's Tale since like 10th grade. It might be interesting to go back and reread that. And I was like, because I really love that book the first time. Maybe it'll ruin it for me. You know, I started thinking about all these books that I loved and like the prospect of rereading them and being crushed is just such a realistic experience like that could happen. Now I'm suddenly afraid to reread books. Um, yeah, that's a thing that's happened. And there's a list of books that I would like to reread. And now I'm sitting here, I'm like, do I really want to reread that one? If I reread that one, is it going to kill me? Like, one of the books I really loved in high school was um, Sybil. And I'm like, no, not rereading that. Um, Wasted? Nope, not rereading that. Um, you know, I, I was lucky I never read Catcher in the Rye as a child. And it's interesting um, listening to the recent review by Strip Cover Lit because... As I'm listening to it, I'm noticing, I'm realizing, like, the only people I know that love that book read it in high school. Like, I don't know anybody that read it later that loves it. And when I was at a writer's um, conference, what, almost two years now? It was right when Ghost at a Watchman came out. And one of the speakers had read... Um, the original like ages ago and then read Ghost Out of Watchmen and then she read them back to back and she analyzed it the difference between the two books and she actually said that the book that was the original book Ghost Out of Watchmen was actually better than uh, Kill a Mockingbird is that the name of it I think that's the name of it <sighs> my brain and um, she said it was actually a better book but she saw why it wasn't the right book for the time. And her explanation was really fascinating. You know, talking about the politics of the time and how Gosetta Watchman was really like on it as far as that, but that wasn't what was popular. And so, she, you know, just to make it short, she'd talked to some people who had read it without having read the original and they liked it better than people who read it after having read the original um, Catcher in the Rye. And so, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, like, it's amazing to me how much reading critically and dissecting literature changes your experience of literature. I mean, it, it's obvious it's going to, but I didn't think it was going to to such a degree. Um, I know it's changed my writing. Like, that is just a given. If I go back and read some that I wrote three years ago. It's night and day. It's, it's like, really? Did a three-year-old write that? But to have my reading change in such a way that now I am legitimately afraid to reread books that I loved as a ch child unless they're a classic. Like, I feel like I could read Anna Karin and I could read Lolita again. I could read books that every time you read them, it's like you're reading more. Like, those types of books, I have no fear of rereading. But Books like The Handmaid's Tale, books like, um, there was a wonderful book um, about Queen Hepetsut, Hepetsut, I think, that, I can't pronounce it, um, there were, that I loved as a child. Um, there, I remember reading Go Ask Alice, I loved it as a child, there's no way I can reread that. Um, like, I'm like listing off all these books that I read in like middle school and high school and thinking, it would be ruined for me. Even some of the classics, you know, um, reading Steinbeck, I liked it. Like there was sometimes I'm like, can you describe something else, please? Like five pages of describing the grass is a bit much, but generally I liked it. But now if I read it, I would be deleting and editing in my brain the entire time. And so it's been ruined for me. And, and I think that's kind of fascinating. Um, 
kind of sad. It explains to me why so many of the older great, like nowadays you talk to, you listen to writers talk and like interviews and stuff and it's like, what do you read? And they start listing all these writers that they read all the time. But in the olden days, a lot of writers stopped reading after a certain point. Like they weren't like, they read a lot before they became writers and they stopped reading. And now I kind of get it. Like, like the super fun, like escape life part of reading is kind of gone. And, and I'm still enjoying reading. I love reading. I love finding something new. I love feeling like I'm getting smarter. Like, that's awesome. Like, I've always been smart in some ways. Like, like I was a genius kid. I was super smart. I tested really high in everything. Had no friends because of it. I read super early. Like, all of that. But when I talk to people who have literature degrees or have been writing consistently since high school and, you know, they're 10 years younger than me and I feel kind of stupid and they'll start listing off all these books that I've never read. And I always feel kind of stupid. And, and now it's like I'm gradually feeling like I'm catching up. Like I'm not quite a stupid anymore. And it's kind of awesome. But with that comes this loss of the ability to pick up something just annoyingly adorable and easy and just fun. I mean, I remember reading Genius Squad. Like, I couldn't read that now. Like, no. I would just be frustrated and throw it against the wall. <laughs> so this is just something that I've been experiencing and I do wonder where I'm going to be in five, ten years. You know, and... I'm, I'm finding that it's making my revisions harder because as I write more and as I read more, my line for what I consider good keeps getting further and further away. And it's getting further away at a faster rate than my writing is improving. So I, I feel a bit like I'm on a treadmill trying to reach something that's just out of the treadmill's reach, kind of. So on that note, I'm going to say ciao. Bye. <laughs>